Um, hello everyone. I think good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's uh, depending where you uh, you are living now. So um, it's my great pleasure, you know, to give a talk and to share through some work um, uh, we done uh, in my group uh, over the last uh, few years. Um, before I jump my talk, my, I will give a brief uh, introduction about uh, my university and my research um, hub. So Monash University is located in um, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Melbourne is a lovely city, I think, uh, one of the most livable city uh, in the world. Um, so Monash University is very big. I think the largest university in Australia. Um, it has, uh, I think, over uh, uh, 80,000 students. And uh, Monash University, a truly global university, we have, uh, um, I think, uh, we have campus in many of the uh, country. Uh, our main campus is in Australia, Melbourne. We also has a campus in Malaysia, in China, Italy, and uh, India. And uh, also, actually, Monash is a member of the Group A. Um, some of you familiar with Australia, you might know the Group A means, and this is the, um, the top eight uh, research intensive university. And uh, Monash University has a very good ranking. It's one of the top um, 100 universities uh, in the world. And this year, uh, Monash is ranked in uh, 58 um, based on the uh, QS or World uh, University ranking. And the, um, my uh, our research hub um, is um, a national research hub focused on the energy efficient separation. Um, I'm the director, and uh, um, it's a um, hub is led by Monash University um, and also like seven um, uh, other Australian universities are involved, like the, um, the University of Queensland, uh, un uh, Queensland University Technology, U UNSW, uh, and the U uh, University Technology, Sydney, uh, Dickey Uni University, Victoria, and uh, uh, Curtin University. Um, this hub also actually uh, closely work with other uh, three um, uh, international universities like the Yale University from America, Nanjing University from Ch China, and the Warwick University from the UK. And uh, this uh, research hub is focused on the uh, technology development and particularly technology and uh, transport translation. So that's um, the reason why we are work closely with some, uh, I think, uh, uh, over 20 industry partners from the different uh, industri industry sectors, like, you know, uh, water industries, um, mining industry, energy um, sectors, and also the biotech and pharmaceuticals. And um, because we believe this uh, separation technology, in particular the membrane-based separation, is a critical uh, unit um, uh, which underpins the whole industry uh, process. Um, you know to improve uh, improve the uh, quality of their product and minimize um, the waste um, generation. So um, back to today's talk and I think uh, um, it, I think um, many of you um, were familiar with this membrane already so we know actually the membrane generally um, can be divided into two categories uh, the porous membrane and the dense membrane and uh, if the porous membrane actually is uh, there uh, mechanism we call it support flow theory, and uh, so and um, use actually the uh, I think uh, in the water processing as example we have a MF and a UF they are considered as a porous membrane. It has pretty good you know uh, water flux 
um, all the electricity selectivity is a relatively poor. Um, you are only able to separate uh, two, uh, what we call uh, uh, um, substance, which must have very large um, difference in size. Um, otherwise, it is impossible to separate um, them. For the dense membrane, actually, this this the trans um, transporter theory is a solution diffusion. This one is a rely on the actually the chem uh, chemical property. You know, actually, if the um, this uh, molecule or ions wanted to pass through, we needed to actually absorb on the membrane surface and after that it diffuse uh, to the um, outside through in the by the um, through in the by the um, uh, chemical. Uh, uh, potential uh, gradients. Um, but the dense membrane, although if in some many cases their selectivity is uh, relatively good, for example, seawater desalination, but the, um, the permeability of flux uh, is uh, very low because this is a dense membrane. And uh, but, uh, but actually, and um, so that's why I will. Many research actually believe some actually the membrane, you know, has a reasonable size, if it has a tillable um, chemical property, might be actually to has the better performance. Um, so, so this uh, the, uh, uh, the key knowledge uh, gap is at this moment. Unfortunately, we don't know actually how to effectively. Uh, construct our uh, membrane with a narrow uh, distri uh, uh, distribution, distribute uh, uh, nano channel in the range of 0 0.5 and 2 nanometer, um, and which is uh, uh, normally used in many very important separation. And because um, we do need actually this uh, nano channel has a tolerable um, geometry and this uh, chemical function. Um, Analysis to uh, to maximize the synergies um, between the size um, uh, exclusion and uh, the uh, specific chemical bonding um, uh, or the inter interactions. Um, because it's a conventional polymer, it is impossible. So that's why actually um, many researchers are started you know uh, looking on the. Uh, what we call is uh, advanced um, uh, material, uh, in, in particular uh, the 2D material. Um, I think uh, uh, you must not, um, uh, you must be very familiar with the 2D material. Definitely, you heard of the graphene many, many times. I think uh, uh, graphene is a typical um, 2D material, and. Uh, and inspired by the discovery of the graphene and uh, nano shade, actually, um, uh, many other uh, 2D material have been discovered, uh, I think, over the last decades, like the Maxines, um, Corona, Tri, TMD, and also a lot of uh, the moths and the cops, which have uh, what we call the pristine uh, moths. Um, uh, so, um, how actually we can use the 2D material to construct uh, uh, what we call um, some um, uh, a high performance membrane? Whether actually we can use those material to achieve some membrane what we want? Um, um, to to construct the two um, 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 membrane using the uh, 3D material as a building block. The general actually the procedure can be showed by this uh, schematic. Uh, normally actually you do need to synthesize the 2D material uh, first. Um, you can either use the uh, bottom up method or top down uh, method um, to uh, you do need to have a high quality um, 2D material first and this 2D material uh, shade needed to be um, dispersed uh, in a suitable um, uh, solving of solutions. And then actually you can use a number of membrane 
uh, sorry, a member of NASA um, to perform uh, a layer on substrate. Uh, you can use uh, like the vacuum filtration, you can use uh, um, deep coating or casting. And then actually, um, after you actually you have a, a well combined or controlled the same film on the substrate, they actually will get a, a, what we call the 2D lamina um, a membrane um, as showed um, uh, showed here. So for a 2D lamina membrane, um, if you, if we look at the um, the molecule uh, or ions um, pass through, um, how they actually they uh, penetrate the membrane. Uh, the typical pass through is actually this molecule um, either um, what we call um, go into the membrane uh, through so actually the gap uh, uh, between two uh, horizontally neighboring uh, nanoshade. And after that, actually, they need to travel along um, uh, uh, horizontally. And after that, they actually find another gap, jump to the next layer, and then eventually they can pass or penetrate the membrane. Um, of course, actually, uh, it also has some shortcut. is formed by you know some pinhole, but if the mem uh, this membrane has some either. Uh, artificial ball or actually uh, pristine uh, nanopause, it also actually uh, can have some shortcut. Uh, and you, you can say actually to um, for this uh, uh, transport, uh, we uh, you know, doesn't matter if this membrane is a thick or thin, uh, whether it's a uh, thin layer or hundred layer. Um, this transport uh, we can um, group them in two type of uh, transport uh, one is what we call is a vertical uh, transport this may actually um, the, uh, the some um, molecule or ions you know to uh, go uh, um, from one layer to the uh, uh, to the another layer below um, this the other like, transport, or what we call it, a horizontal transport, that's me actually along this um, 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 shade. Uh, and the, uh, for, the, for both of them, you can see the internal geometry and the chemical functionality um, and, and play very important the roles. Um, so in my group, actually, we and did um, some work um, to control um, the horizontal and the vertical transport from the different um, with a different method. Um, I will use actually um, two T and um, two typical uh, two D material graphene and the morph um, to show uh, how actually we can achieve that. So. Our first uh, uh, work in the 2D uh, membrane is uh, published in the 2015. Uh, so we use a chemical method um, um, to to control the um, interlayer space between the neighboring and uh, other shape. Um, for some of you who already work in the uh, graphene uh, outside. Um, is the memory you might know actually because the graphene oxide is hydrophilic and we, we you have a graphene membrane put into the water actually swelling uh, occur. And what does that mean? That means that the interlayer space um, in the graphene side and gradually uh, increase and could triple or double. Um, and in this case actually uh, although actually your water flux might increase up uh, the, your um, cell activity uh, can be compromised. And also, actually, when the sweating happens, the membrane will have um, very poor uh, mechanical strains. So, we use a chemical um, method. Uh, we use a hydrogen um, iodide vapor to reduce this. 
So once um, the first day you use the graph and um, graph of side is pushing to form a membrane, after that you use uh, the hydrogen iodide vapor to reduce and it's and based on the what substrate you use, you can use hydrophobic or hydrophilic. If you use hydrophilic vapor, you can get a, um, after the reduction, um, you can put your membrane on the water surface. And quite a, um, um, uh, interesting, you can say to this uh, reduced carbon oxide membrane has um, um, separated from your hydrophilic membrane uh, very quickly. Um, and you can get a you know, freestanding um, uh, reduced work on the side of the membrane. So the thickness is definitely easy to control depending on the loading of the work on the side of the shape. And the thinnest memory you can shape they could come down to um, uh, uh, 20 nanometers. Um, so, um, of course, the chemical reduction is a part of strong. You can say from the FTIR characterization, um, most um, uh, oxygen containing function group um, um, has been effectively removed. And the very actually, um, based on the XRD characterization, um, what you can say, um, um, the drug is. Uh, uh, reduce the membrane and the wet once you put them in the water. Actually, the interlayer space is almost the same. Uh, what that means that means actually after the chemical reduction and just um, the the swelling uh, was effectively um, uh, was effectively uh, 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 limited. Um, so that you can uh, get a, a relatively stable membrane. Then we tested um, the performance of this uh, uh, reduced graphene um, oxide membrane in the FO mode. And uh, um, because actually you can have a very, uh, what we call a freestanding membrane, and that actually uh, you can eliminate the internal concentration polarization in the conventional FO membrane. So you can chew um, very high. Um, Box compared to the commercial like the CDA membrane, and also actually because actually um, the the signal uh, the interlayer space um, um, is um, is much narrower than the, um, so you can chew very good uh, sort of rejection um, as shown here. So this uh, reduced uh, side the membrane is um, um, achieved a much much. Um, lower uh, what we call the harder um, permeation grade. And uh, also, actually, we develop um, a very simple method to transfer uh, the graphene uh, memory of film uh, from one substrate to another. It's um, very simple. It's before you try your the graphene. Uh, film and you just actually put it into the fridge um, the, and the, then um, uh, oh, oh, sorry you needed to attach all the target substrate first um, the director because at this stage your work on side film is still wet I and mean, you put the fridge the, the water actually became high became a solid and you leave this in the uh, fridge and the waters um, the eyes uh, uh, slowly uh, evaporate, and uh, actually the original substrate uh, will actually be easily peel off, and uh, you can uh, this graphene uh, um, oxide film uh, if uh, successfully transport or a lot of the different substrate, and after that you can do um, some uh, reduction and. Uh, uh, we, uh, as showed here, actually, we can use this method to transport the graphene uh, oxide film or membrane on the glass, the sub um, uh, plastic, uh, ceramic, um, uh, um, and when they say you know solid or flexible, yeah, uh, even uh, any shape can work very well. Um, so, I think chemical method. Um, Chemical reduction um, is a very good unit. You know,
remove most of oxygen containing function group. Uh, sometimes we might not want you know um, to have such a small uh, interlayer space, um, but because the chemical reduction is, uh, is very fast, it's not easy to control. So then we um, after that we explore the, uh, the thermal method, a uh, thermal reduction. So what we find actually, uh, compared to the chemical reduction, the thermal method is, uh, is uh, more easier for you to control. So we use about 150 degree and we, um, to reduce the work on the side of the brain, um, usually to uh, add the different uh, atmosphere in the air, in the vacuum, and we compare it with the, um, the chemical reduced uh, one, you can see actually that um, the, the interlayer um, are different. Um, um, this interlayer will be actually smaller than the graphene oxide membrane, but actually is uh, kind of larger um, than the uh, chemical reduced RGO uh, membrane. And uh, uh, we force actually to optimize um, the uh, thermal. Uh, reduction method. Uh, what we find actually, if we further reduce the reduction temperature um, to down to the 80 degree, um, because if you lower the, um, the temperature, the reduction speed will, uh, will even slower. Uh, what we find actually, um, as you extend the redu reduction process, make this much easier. Uh, for you to control the uh, interlayer size, as shown here, I could have, like from the uh, at the beginning stage and to the to, um, uh, 70 hour, you can see actually the interlayer uh, size of the um, graphene membrane gradually um, re reduced and. Uh, what do you based on the time actually you can control the size at a uh, less than one astron uh, scale um, and make it easy for you easier to uh, to uh, control the sort of rejection uh, for example um, here we show the uh, after the reduction uh, you see this uh, uh, what do we call this moderate uh, thermal reduction? Um, although the, well, the flux um, uh, dropped a little bit, and uh, this membrane can achieve relatively good um, sort of sort of rejection um, because actually you can easily control the interlay uh, space um, size based on the, the the size of the lines. Um, what do you want to separate? So, and, uh, um, so for these uh, uh, horizontal channels, and we actually, um, um, in most of the study, we assume actually we have very small um, <coughs> surface. But uh, um, after we did a um, uh, comprehensive characterization of this graphene-based uh, uh, laminar membrane, uh, what do we find actually uh, this membrane and this interlayer space is not small at all. And uh, as prepared um, the graphene oxide uh, membrane, if you look at this SEM, Image, you, you can find it, there's so many, what we call a wrinkle. wrinkle. You have a larger wrinkle, you have a small wrinkle. And when we actually use our method to transport this membrane on a very flat substrate like glass, a larger wrinkle is disappeared. We assume this uh, larger wrinkle might be caused by the substrate. But there's still a lot of um, uh, nano wrinkle, where it's very tiny. And under the high uh, resolution TM image, we can say the diameter uh, is only two or three nanometers. Looks like a um, very similar to so, a uh, carbon nanotube. And even after the um, uh, reduction, 
and those synonymous wrinkles still um, exist in the membrane. So the membrane we know in the process that we have two steps. One right? is the you know, filtration and to let them the form of this uh, layer on the substrate that after that the dry. And we play right to this, uh, this uh, ice cost in the drying process. And the, so we did a um, um, MD simulation and uh, to simulate this uh, process, what, what we find uh, um, 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 during research, um, during this is a drying process of um, the water uh, slowly you um, uh, evaporate from this carbon oxide membrane and this uh, nano shade uh, um, shrink um, and the form is uh, this uh, tiny uh, nano wrinkles and in particular when the nano wrinkle size is around the three two or two three um, nano nanometer this uh, nano wrinkle wrinkle is uh, relatively stable and uh, and also it produces nano wrinkle can uh, um, happen on the top of the middle and the bottom and so there we use uh, the uh, experimental um, to validate our MD simulation and then we do a uh, through the drying process um, we had the three par parallel experiment uh, one is we use the hexing after after the vacuum vacuum field uh, vacuum filtration to get a, a wet wrapping membrane. Then after that we put the, um, a few drop hexing um, on the membrane. We know actually hexing and the water they are is immiscible. So what this means is um, wrapping. Uh, oxide the membrane is powered by the hexane and it is slow down the water evaporation. The drying process will become much longer. And what we find actually, and if the, when the drying process takes longer, the uh, wrinkle the density is much, much low. Was this mean actually much less than? another wrinkle formed um, inside is um, the graphene oxide membrane. When we add uh, the ethanol on, on the membrane, on the wet uh, graphene uh, oxide membrane, because ethanol and water um, can mix very well, and also the uh, ethanol can evaporate much faster. So then is this drawing process take much shorter time. In this case, much, much more than a wrinkle are formed inside this membrane. And uh, so we have another is we use the water as a control ex experiment. And what we find actually after the chemical reductions, the nano density I still follow the same trends for these uh, three different uh, approach. And we tested some um, membrane um, with uh, three different uh, um, nano wrinkle density. And the result shows um, nano wrinkle um, can um, improve the water flux um, for the for the membrane treated by the ethanol and it has highest uh, water flux. Um, quite interesting, what we find is just the, the reverse sort of um, flux um, did not change too much. And uh, we further, um, we know actually the nano wrinkle is around to a three nanometer and in principle the size is so very big, it should not, um, uh, it's not able to reject the, the, the salt. Then we tested, um, we did another MD simulation and find um, to simulate what would happen uh, for this another wrinkle. One side is 
water in another side and you use the uh, sodium chloride solution. What we find actually is that the nano wrinkle can function similar as the carbon nanotube. And uh, when interesting, uh, they let the water quickly um, go through. And uh, what that means is this nano wrinkle could uh, function as a high speed um, um, channel for the water to pass through. And uh, because in the FO, water um, transport and ions transport um, are different, there is op opposite direction. And the MD simulation also shows it when the water flux is so high, actually it's blocked as the, um, the sort of ions to come into the um, channel. And this could be the reason why actually for the FO mode and this another wrinkle can improve the water flux, but um, uh, did not increase the um, water sort of flux. And uh, then we tested some member with the different uh, uh, wrinkle and the RO mode, and we got a different uh, actually phenomenon. What I found actually, because in the RO mode is the water and ice, and they have the same direction, and actually, um, in this case, um, the, the, um, the nano wrinkle um, do has a, a big impact on this um, selectivity. It, it, it makes the selectivity uh, lower. And uh, also to understand the function group, uh, the impact of the function group on the water transport, uh, we use MD to simulate uh, how the water molecule uh, to pass through the membrane. We, we have the different function group like um, hydrogen, hydroxyl, and the COOH, um, this function group. And we match the, um, the water density and the count um, water molecule um, at a certain time pass through this one. Um, I will uh, uh, skip the detail, jump to the conclusion, is what we find uh, um, this function group has a, a different impact uh, and uh, definitely actually if this function group has uh, affinity with the water, it can, um, can boost um, the water transport to some extent. But uh, the, the, the size of the function, function group also play very important roles because if the size of this function group is too big, it could block the channel um, because this in the space of the age, the size is only actually, you know, in most cases, less than one nanometer. So the size also play quite, quite important roles. Um, but then we back, back to to see how we can tailor the vertical transport. Um, so for the vertical transport, uh, we know actually if this nano shade has a very large lateral size, uh, this water or ice, um, they need to travel a very long distance before they can find the age and you need to move and turn around to the next uh, layer. So. The, if the membrane, if the nanoshade has a pause, um, either artificial or, or pristine pause, it could actually shot uh, the, um, the horizontal transport distance. And so, driven by this uh, idea, and uh, what we uh, tried in the to create a nanopause on graphene nanoshape. Um, you know if graphene, if it's perfect, if we, um, it would not have a much uh, nanopause. So we then use a chemical method um, to uh, use the hydrogen peroxide. You know hydrogen peroxide is a oxidizing agent. And uh, so we Mixed the graphene oxide nanoshade with the hydrogen peroxide solution, and after this treatment, and from this high resolution, 
uh, TM image, you can say that the summer um, nanopores which are around, uh, uh, I think, a few nanometer are effectively created from um, the um, urban oxide and nano shape. Then we use this as a building block to assemble them to a membrane. Then after that, we also did a reduction um, to, you know, to improve these mechanical strains. What we find uh, um, compared with uh, the origin graphene uh, oxide um, building block, after we created the nanopores, the membrane flux increase almost, uh, um, I think, uh, 20 times. And the, the, the reason, as I am explained, is because the short term, the transport distance, and also um, uh, even actually the, the flux um, jumped uh, significantly, the solder rejection uh, did not decline too much. That really is the sort of object is based on the size of building and um, based on the size of the interlayer space. Um, even though we create a lot of nanopores, um, but the interlayer space um, and did not change it too much. There's the reason they still can tell a relatively good um, a comparable sort of rejection with the um, the wrapping nano shade without the, the artificial pores. Um, to um, because to create the artificial, artificial nano pores on the graphene uh, nano shade is not an easy task. Um, but we do have some um, two D nano material which has the pristine nano pores like the morph and pores. And um, the, so then we employ um, some to the uh, moth material, but because we you because it uses a membrane for the water processing, one critical um, property is this moth um, nano shade must be stable. Uh, we know many moth materials not very sensitive to water. Luckily, we. Um, we synthesized um, uh, alumina based uh, uh, morph. And this, um, from this image, you can say it's monon layer, the thickness is below two, two nanometer. And uh, in particular, this morph is very stable and it can um, keep the integrity in the water for, uh, for a few months. Then we, uh, very interestingly, this um, um, morpho has a thing of, uh, suitable, uh, I think, uh, for size, and uh, this has a rectangular uh, shape, and uh, the narrow part is only 3.7, as soon as you know, actually, it's small enough to reject the lines that allow the water to pass uh, through. Then we, then we use, use this to assemble, the, the, use this to assemble the, the membrane, membrane. and, and uh, you, can you can say, actually, you, um, you, you can get a, uh, still can get a um, laminar structure. Um, uh, we use um, a low AO substrate. Um, after we got a membrane, we tested it is a performance. Um, the, uh, what we find actually, um, this membrane has uh, uh, outstanding um, sort of rejection. And for all tested ions, actually, the, the their uh, uh, deviation rate is extremely low. Um, it's very easy to um, understand because the force size of this mob is very, very small. And um, even though at this moment this memory flux um, is um, still not as good as it is a sort of rejection, but we compare this membrane with uh, uh, and some, some other um, 2D material, material membrane, membrane like the graphene and rhodium um, um, dioxide, um, 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 
And uh, so what we can say, um, so this membrane um, do have some kind of um, advantage. And then we use um, MD to understand how the water can pass through this uh, membrane and how it really, and um, the um, move another shade stack the together. And uh, based on the, um, based on the MD simulation or DFT calculation, we believe we actually when we assembled the membrane, they are um, stacked in a AB mode, so AB stacking. And uh, so the channel trace is a two to neighboring layer could form a vertically aligned channel. And from, from this um, um, MD simulation, what we can create, different from the conventional 2D material, this rely on this 2D uh, interlayer space of the neighboring um, nano shape. And for this one, this water is mainly and um, pass through this membrane, uh, uh, mainly through this uh, vertical channel from the, the top to the bottom. Um, and then in this case, this means actually the distance um, for the water molecule to pass through it will be exactly the same as the thickness of this membrane, it will be much shorter than conventional. Um, than conventional um, to the uh, laminar membrane. But the reason why the water flux, uh, um, water flux is still not very high, the possible reason is it could be um, in some part the two channels are not, uh, are not aligned very well. So not all pores actually is, uh, uh, is a partial pores. And this could be the reason. And uh, also, actually, the, um, the MD result shows in those nanopores, the water molecule actually form a, a water layer. The so three water molecule aligned together, as I showed here, and they form a layer. And that's um, the reason is the shape of this um, pores is I mentioned is rectangular and it's quite uh, wide, but it is small. And uh, so um, this is some result I showed here. Um, try to uh, conclude what, uh, my talk. So first, you can say actually it's possible to tailor uh, the vertical, the horizontal transport of the water and the eyes um, in the uh, membrane. But in many, in many cases, the transport mechanism is still not very clear. The reason is we do not have uh, we do not have a uh, very good um, uh, character, kind of characterization tools to understand, to do some institute characterization. Um, we, in many cases, we have to rely on the MD simulation, um, but MD, you do need, uh, do need to, um, if you can, uh, if we can have some good advanced uh, um, uh, characterizing tools, so it will be help us to better understand the transport mechanism. Another one is at this moment the internal geometry and surface chemistry um, is far away from what I call the satisfying, um, satisfying um, level. Um, even though we know uh, the internal geometric surface chemistry is very important, we are still not. Um, um, we still don't know how to precisely um, tailor or control them. And also, um, the last is uh, uh, more, I believe, no and more to the material uh, will be reported. And this can actually um, you know, give us more freedom uh, to explore this uh, to the system membrane. Um, so, 
But this is some uh, publication uh, published in my book uh, related to the um, based uh, uh, membrane. If you are interested, uh, please um, uh, read and download. Um, the last, I would like to acknowledge um, the funding um, agencies, Australian Research Council and Monash University, um, and also the lab. To thank to my uh, collaborator and uh, also thank uh, my wonderful um, research group. Uh, they, are, they work very hard, and uh, um, all the work is done by my postdoc, my PhD student. Um, uh, the last is um, my group is uh, looking for new postdoc. Um, if you are working in the field of proton exchange membrane or morph cough membrane. Um, if you want to actually have your postdoc, uh, if you like the Australia, um, please feel free uh, to send an uh, email uh, to me. Uh, my email address is here. Uh, I will stop here. I'm uh, happy to answer any question from you.